Have you ever pondered the enigmatic realm of antimatter, a universe of opposites and equals? In this exploration, we delve into the fascinating world of antiparticles. We trace their discovery, examine their unique properties, and grapple with the cosmic mysteries they pose. Join us as we voyage through one of the universe's most intriguing enigmas, antimatter, from Paul Dirac's visionary prediction to the persistent mysteries in modern physics. Matter, the material symphony. What's the deal with matter? Like, what's it made of, and how does it work? Matter is essentially everything around us that has mass and occupies space. It can be as tiny as subatomic particles, or as large as stars and planets. At its core, matter is made up of atoms, or even smaller components like quarks and leptons. Common examples of matter include everyday objects like air, water, rocks, and even people. Antimatter – Abyssal Echo There is something called antimatter. Why is antimatter such a big deal in the world of science? Well, it is like a mirror reflection of matter, but with opposite properties. It's composed of antiparticles that have the same mass as particles of ordinary matter, but opposite charge and characteristics. For instance, an electron in regular matter has a negative charge, but its antimatter counterpart, the positron, carries a positive charge. Understanding antimatter is key to comprehending the origin and evolution of the universe. When matter and antimatter come into contact, they annihilate each other, releasing a tremendous amount of energy. This annihilation is a fundamental process that has significant implications for astrophysics and cosmology. The existence of antimatter also raises one of the biggest mysteries in physics. Why is there more matter than antimatter in the universe? This imbalance is crucial because without it, the universe as we know it, with galaxies, stars, planets, and life, would not exist. At the beginning of the universe, just after the Big Bang, it's believed that equal amounts of matter and antimatter were created. However, matter dominated for reasons not yet fully understood, leading to the universe largely made of matter that we observe today. This asymmetry is a central puzzle in modern physics and is crucial for explaining the universe's very existence and everything in it. Infinite Ember Now the real question is, what can we actually use antimatter for? And how on earth did we even discover it in the first place? Besides its fundamental role in physics, antimatter has practical applications. It's employed in medical imaging, like in positron emission tomography scans. And there are speculative concepts about its potential use in future space propulsion systems, thanks to the tremendous energy released during its annihilation with matter. The energy beyond our imagination, even annihilation with tiny substances, can produce energy that can keep propelling our rockets for years. Hence, energy of this kind can be very essential for future space missions. It all goes back to 1928. Paul Dirac, an eminent figure in modern physics, hypothesized the existence of what we now know as the positron, an anti-electron. Dirac's revolutionary idea emerged from his relativistic version of the Schrodinger wave equation, predicting the possibility of anti-electrons. He acknowledged J. Robert Oppenheimer for expanding on this concept, leading to the understanding that a positron, as the electron's counterpart, should possess the same mass, but an opposite charge. Four years later, in 1932, Carl D. Anderson made a groundbreaking discovery, confirming Dirac's theory by discovering positrons, thereby laying a cornerstone in the field of antimatter research. Particles and their antimatter counterparts have the same mass, but opposite electric charges, like mirror images. For example, a positron is an electron's opposite, and an antiproton is a proton's opposite. These antimatter particles can join to make things like antihydrogen, just as normal particles make matter. When antimatter and matter particles meet, they destroy each other and turn into energy, showing Einstein's famous idea that mass can turn into energy, E equals mc squared. Right after the universe began, there was a lot of antimatter and matter, but they kept destroying each other. Now our universe mostly has matter, with very little antimatter, which confuses scientists. This difference, known as baryon asymmetry, goes against the idea that particles and their opposites should act the same. 
Alchemy of Antimatter Dreams If antimatter is so important, can we create it on Earth? Simple answer is yes, but it's a very difficult process. Particle accelerators are key to antimatter production. They collide particles to generate matter in antimatter pairs, which are then separated for study. Despite these efforts, only minuscule amounts of antimatter are produced annually. At CERN's Antimatter Factory, groundbreaking experiments have been performed, including studying antimatter's behavior under Earth's gravity and creating anti-hydrogen and anti-helium. These experiments are crucial for advancing our understanding of fundamental physics, exploring cosmological mysteries like the matter-antimatter imbalance, and paving the way for future technology and medical applications. Antimatter's Earthly Odyssey So what are the challenges in making antimatter on Earth? Making antimatter isn't easy. Scientists speed up tiny particles and smash them together, creating both matter and antimatter. The law of conservation of energy says that energy in a system stays the same unless more is added or taken away. Energy can change forms but can't just appear or disappear. Creating antimatter on Earth poses significant challenges due to its elusive and volatile nature. The process is extremely inefficient and energy intensive. Antimatter's tendency to annihilate upon contact with matter adds more complexity. Researchers face the daunting task of containing antimatter, as any contact with the container's walls results in annihilation, releasing energy that can damage the containment system. Also, antimatter is scarce in the universe, making its production on Earth even more challenging. The cost of energy required to create and store it far exceeds any practical applications currently available, limiting its use to specialized research. Gold's Whisper the priciest essence. Why is antimatter the most expensive substance in the universe? Antimatter's rarity and complex production process significantly contributes to its high cost. Specialized equipment, like particle accelerators, is required to create and manage antimatter, making it a costly endeavor. The estimated price for a gram of antimatter is around $62.5 trillion. Antimatter's explosive nature annihilating upon contact with normal matter and releasing immense energy adds to the difficulty and cost of its production and storage. Higgs boson How does the Higgs boson relate to the mass of antimatter? The Higgs field, through the Higgs boson, imparts mass to all fundamental particles, regardless of whether they are part of matter or antimatter. This process is vital for understanding how both matter and antimatter require their mass. The Higgs field's non-zero value in the early universe was a critical factor in the mass acquisition by particles, crucial for the formation of both matter and antimatter. Despite its role in mass acquisition, the Higgs field does not explain the observed asymmetry between matter and antimatter in the universe. The discovery of the Higgs boson was a key piece in confirming the standard model of particle physics, which symmetrically treats matter and antimatter. The interactions between the Higgs field and both matter and antimatter remain a significant area of research, potentially shedding light on fundamental asymmetries in early universe forces. Let's delve into a cosmic enigma. Now, you must wonder why does the universe contain more regular matter than antimatter? Well, according to the Big Bang Theory, there should be equal amounts of matter and antimatter, but we see more matter. If they were equal, they'd destroy each other, leaving no life. Scientists wonder why this is. In 1967, Andrei Sakharov suggested three ideas, the Sakharov conditions, to explain this. These ideas break some physics rules and could help us understand why our universe has more matter. So far, scientists haven't fully solved this mystery. The standard model of particle physics explains some things, but not everything. It's like knowing part of a story but missing key chapters. Researchers at the Large Hadron Collider are trying to find new physics laws. They are studying weird particle behaviors and looking for a tiny magnetic property in particles. This is tough, like finding a tiny needle in a big field. There's also a theory about an anti-universe that's the opposite of ours and might explain some space mysteries. This idea thinks time might go backward in this anti-universe. What's your take on the antimatter mystery? Share your thoughts in the comments.
Stay tuned for more captivating explorations into our cosmos wonders. Thanks for watching.